Hello, hope everyone is doing well. For this video recording, we will be covering the different levels of body organization, where we will go from the chemical level all the way up to the organismal level. And then we will be able to differentiate the 11 organ systems. The human body consists of several interrelated levels of structural organization, ranging from the least complex, which is the chemical level, all the way to the most complex one, which is the organismal level. At the chemical level, atoms are going to organize to form a molecule. In this case, over here, we have two hydrogen atoms that are going to come together with one oxygen atom to form a water molecule. So this would be your chemical level. The next level is what we call the cellular level. Like the name says, this will form cells. Therefore, these water molecules and other molecules, they're going to come together and now they're going to form the cells. The cells are going to be the basic structural and functional living unit of an organism. Here, the example that we have is a smooth muscle cell. You can see how the water molecules and other molecules form organelles and fluid and then the membrane and now you have a cell. Therefore, we can say that the cells are going to be the smallest living unit in the human body. Next, we have the tissue level. Like the name says, the cells are going to come together to form tissues. In this case, the smooth muscle cells came together to form the smooth muscle tissue. So these are groups of similar cells and also their materials that surround them that usually will have similar embryological origins and therefore they're going to perform specialized functions, so similar specialized functions. There are four different types of tissues. We have the epithelial tissue, the connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue, and these we're gonna cover it in the next module, module two. Then we go to the organ level, right over here, organ level. Here we're going to have two or more different types of tissues that are going to come together and organize to form an organ. In this case, we have the urinary bladder that's formed by two tissues, the smooth muscle tissue and the skeletal muscle tissue. Now these structures, they will have specific functions and they usually have a recognizable shape. So when I look at this, I recognize that this shape is similar to the urinary bladder. Therefore, the smooth muscle will have a function. The function is to be able to stretch and allow the accumulation of urine. And the skeletal muscle is going to serve to make sure that the urine stays in this compartment until you're ready to urinate. The system level or the organ system level, related organs are going to organize into systems, which are functionally related groups of organs that are going to cooperate with one another to perform a common general function. And there are 11 organ systems in our body. The example of organ system that we have here is the urinary system as they gave the example of the urinary bladder. So the urinary bladder is part of the urinary system, organ system, together with the kidney, the ureter, and the urethra. And therefore, there are 10 more organ systems. We have the integumentary system, skeletal system, muscular system, cardiovascular, lymphatic, nervous, endocrine, respiratory, digestive, and reproductive systems. And we're gonna cover, in this course, we're gonna cover only a few of them. In this course, we're gonna be covering the integumentary system, skeletal, muscular, the nervous system, and that's it. The last level is the organismal level, right over here, where all the organ systems are going to be structurally integrated in a way that they will function 
in cooperation to each other to constitute the total organism, which makes up the whole human body. So at the end, there is a balance of how all organ systems are going to be working together. Here is just showing you a list of all the organ systems that I mentioned on the previous slide. For us, we're focusing on the integumentary system, skeletal, muscular, and nervous systems. But on the next few slides, we're going to get an overview of all the organ systems. Here on the integumentary system, we have the main components, which are the hair, the skin, the nails, and the sweat glands. As you can see, it has several different functions. These functions that are listed here are mainly going to be related to the skin in terms of enclosing the internal body structures. As we can imagine, the skin is covering the whole body, so it will enclose these internal body structures. It will be the site of many sensory receptors that go from the skin to the central nervous system so that we can perceive, for example, touch, and pressure and pain. It will also provide protection because it's sort of a barrier between the outside and the inside. It will regulate temperature, prevent um, water loss, and also help to produce vitamin D. When we are exposed to the sunlight, it will manufacture uh, vitamin D. But we're gonna go into more details about all these functions and components when we get to the integumentary system, which is our module number three. Next is the skeletal system. Components of the skeletal system are going to be the bones, right over here, the joints between two bones, and the associated cartilages that are at the extremities of these bones. Functions, uh, it will support and protect the body. In terms of support, we can see how the body is upright, and that's how it will support. In terms of protection, for example, we have the skull that's gonna protect the brain inside, so that's a form of protection. It will also be important for providing a surface area for muscle attachment. So for example, if we wanna talk about the muscle that will flex the forearm, we can say that the muscle will originate somewhere over here on the arm. It will cross the elbow joint and allow the performance of the flexion. So pulling your forearm up, which leads us into our next function, which is aid in body movement. It will also be important for housing cells that will produce blood cells. They're housed inside of these long bones, where we call the medullary cavity. And the last function is store minerals and lipids. And all this we're gonna talk more when we cover the skeletal system in our module number four. Here we have the muscular system, which is composed of skeletal muscle tissue and tendons which will insert on the bones. As they insert on the bones, they will allow for production of movement. When they are contracting, they allow us to have a certain posture. And also, it helps with production of body heat. Now, muscles, when they contract, they generate heat due to the oxidation of glucose molecules to produce ATP. And we will talk more about this when we get to the muscular system, which will be our module number eight. This will be the last organ system that we're going to cover in our course, which is the nervous system. Components of the nervous system are the brain, which is going to be located up here. We have the spinal cord, which is a continuation of the brain right down the middle. Then we have the spinal nerves that exit from the spinal cord. And then we have what we call special senses organs, which are the eyes, the ears, the tongue, and the olfactory. So for vision, hearing, taste, and smell. In terms of function, 
that are going to have specific sensory receptors that are going to detect sensation and generate an action potential that will take the information to the central nervous system and it's going to respond either by a muscle contraction or a glandular secretion. And the other function is intellectual function, for example. But we're going to cover a lot more when we get to our module number 10. Here we have the endocrine system. The main function of the endocrine system is the production of hormones because it has the presence of all these different types of glands. And these hormones are going to be important because they're going to target specific organs by traveling through the blood vessels. So that's the main function of the endocrine system. Cardiovascular system is next. If we break up the word cardiovascular, cardio means heart, vascular means blood vessels. And what travels through the blood vessels and the heart is the blood. So these are the components of the cardiovascular system, the blood, the heart, and the blood vessels. In terms of function, it will be important because it will transport nutrients, waste products, gas, hormones through the blood vessels and spread throughout the body. It will also play an important role in the immune response because of the cells that are circulating throughout the blood vessels. And in addition to that, it will regulate the body temperature just by allowing the blood to either circulate more superficial or more deep in the body. Next, we have the lymphatic system, which can also be called the immune system. Components of the system are listed here. We have the lymphatic fluid, which will travel through the lymphatic vessels, just like the blood travels through the blood vessels. There are going to be a few organs like the spleen, the thymus, lymph nodes, and tonsils. And also, very important, the cells that are going to be running through the blood vessels, which are part of the immune response. So, for example, the white blood cells and lymphocytes are going to be those uh, cells that are going to carry out these immune responses. It will maintain tissue fluid balance through these lymphatic vessels right over here, and it will carry lipids from the GI tract to the blood through a duct that's called the thoracic duct. That's why we have a lot of accumulation of fat around the heart in individuals that eat a lot of fat. And because of these immune responses, it will be important, like I said, to combat diseases and remove foreign substances from the blood and from the lymph. Here we have the respiratory system. We did talk a little bit about the respiratory system in the first learning outcome when I was explaining the definition of physiology and anatomy. Here are the components of the respiratory system. We're going to have the lungs. Right over here, the air passages, the pharynx coming down over here, the trachea, and the bronchial tubes, which will take the air into the lungs. Its main function is to transfer the oxygen from this inhaled air to the blood that's filled with carbon dioxide that's coming from the heart. It will also help to regulate this acid-base balance of body fluids and because of the glottis that's present in the larynx, it will help with the production of sound. Next, we have the digestive system. The digestive system is made of several organs and because of that, it's divided into organs that belong to the gastrointestinal tract and the other organs are what we call accessory organs. So tract is where the food will pass through. So it starts in the mouth, it goes down the pharynx, the esophagus, it comes to the stomach, then it goes to the small intestine, which is all of this, and then it goes into the large intestine. So that would be your tract, and then it will exit through the anus. The accessory organs are all the organs that will help in the digestion. So mainly, uh, it's going to be composed of 
two different types of glands. So we have salivary glands and the pancreas, which is a gland. And then it's also going to contain the liver and the gallbladder that are going to be important specifically for fat digestion. As function, we all know that it's important for absorption of nutrients. But first, you need to break down the food that you eat through either a mechanical or a chemical breakdown. And then it will eliminate the waste products that's not used by our body through the anus down here. Now we have the urinary system, which in terms of components, we talked briefly earlier in this learning outcome. We're going to have the kidneys right over here. The kidneys have these canals that are called the ureters that will take the urine into the urinary bladder. From the urinary bladder, it will exit the body through the urethra. It will produce and store and eliminate urine. So it produces the urine in the kidneys. It stores in the urinary bladder. It will eliminate also waste products and regulates the volume chemical composition of the blood as the blood is going to be filtered over here in the kidneys more specifically in the glomerulus of the kidney it will help together with the respiratory system help maintain the acid base balance of the body fluids it will maintain body's mineral balance and it will also regulate the production of red blood cells in terms of anatomy, the urinary system is very simple. In terms of physiology, the urinary system is very, very complex. Last but not least is the reproductive system. We have a male and a female reproductive system. In terms of components, a lot of the structures are homologous to each other. We have, in terms of gonads, the testes in males and the ovaries in females. Then we have what we call the associated organs, several associated organs in males and females. For example, the ductus deferens is homologous to the uterine tubes. With regards to functions, the gonads are going to be important because they're going to produce the gametes, which are the sperm in males and the oocytes in females that are going to unite to form a new organism, so to create an embryo as it develops. It also is going to be important because it's going to release several hormones that are going to be important not only for reproduction, but for other body processes as well. We have associated organs, which are important to transport and store the gametes, which are these right over here. And then for females only, we have memory glands that are going to be important for production of milk after labor. The last slide is a little summary of the major functions of all the organ systems that I mentioned.